welcome to season three of the BizHack Masterclass series in partnership with the Office of the Mayor, Daniela Levine Cava. I wanted to start with a big announcement, which is we were a part uh, of the mayor's uh, year one state of the county address. Um, and we're gonna show a quick clip from that. Uh, before we do that though, I wanted to ask uh, Danilo uh, Vargas from the Office of the Mayor, our partner in this Masterclass series to kind of set things up for us and then we'll show the video clip. Thank you, Dan. Well, listen, uh, I want to congratulate you. The, the mayor had her amazing state of the county address on, on Monday at 10 a.m. and she laid out the plan and I was so happy that she mentioned the great work in our foundational partnership that is part of her Strive 305 initiative, and she mentioned all the great work that, that you're doing, Dan, and the whole team, Yoel, Lilia, congratulations on this. And you'll see that she mentions it. And just for everybody on the call, I just want to let you know that this is part of the investments that Miami-Dade County is making in your uh, success. And so with that, Dan, let's, let's see the clip. Over 1,500 small business owners participated in our BizHack classes and the Morning Huddle, online programs that connect them to valuable resources, training, and coaching. Camiana Jones Bay and Ann Johnson Bay, the founders of Perfect Salon Suites, a shared retail space for beauty entrepreneurs, are just one Strive 305 success story. I was delighted to join their grand opening at Mall of the Americas last year. They're now preparing to open another set of suites at Miami International Mall. Congrats. Beautiful. Yeah, th yeah, thank you. And, um, uh, you know, we were really just so proud to be mentioned by name. I know it kind of went quickly there uh, in the state of the county speech and and uh, so proud to, to be connecting with nearly 1,500 businesses uh, who are are doing this? And uh, you know, Kim, Kimyana and Anna are actually part of uh, BizHack's uh, Digital Marketers Edge seven week program. Uh, that's part of the sponsorship and part of what we're doing is giving uh, deserving entrepreneurs like them uh, really a leg up. And they have been just model participants. So thank you uh, and congratulations to everybody for this big recognition. Uh, and we're excited for what's to come. So uh, stay tuned for for news about season four, uh, which is around the corner uh, and other big plans that we have for 2022 and beyond. Um, so uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get started with the uh, uh, formal presentation and then our amazing masterclass speaker, Yoel Gutierrez. So as we discussed, uh, this is the Digital Marketing Masterclass Series. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder of BizHack and the host of the Masterclass Series. Uh, we help uh, small businesses grow using digital marketing. Uh, we do that through coaching, consulting, and courses. Uh, and we're very honored to be partnering um, with the mayor uh, on this incredibly important initiative. This is the second uh, of our season three uh, master classes in two weeks. We're gonna have the amazing Abdul Muhammad speaking about brand love essentials. Two weeks ago, we talked about thought leadership on LinkedIn. You can actually find that uh, on our YouTube channel. And today we're gonna be talking uh, about Google Business Profile, formerly known as Google My Business with the amazing entrepreneur, Yoel Gutierrez. Um, we wanted to, uh, today you're really going to dig into how do you, as a, uh, a retail store, uh, a location-based business, how do you leverage Google Business Profile uh, to get more traffic to your website, to show up on maps, to get reviews and testimonials? Google Business Profile has really become an essential tool for any location-based business, especially retail stores. So if you own a salon or a barber shop or like Yoel run a pest control company where you're serving a geographic area and you're not leveraging the heck out of Google business profile, you are missing out 
in a big way. And that's what today is all about. We're going to give you actionable tips, seven specific guidelines that you can use to get the most out of Google Business Profile. And I will tell you that if there's any tool out there that will make you more money almost overnight, it's Google Business Profile. It's incredibly easy to use and incredibly powerful. And just if you don't believe me, watch Yoel's case study. He's leveraged Google Business Profile and other tactics to double his company year over year, three years running. He is now one of the top five largest Mosquito Joe franchises in the country because of tools like Google Business Profile. And if you're not using it in the way he describes, you're leaving money on the table, you're leaving customers on the table. I did wanna say that in a month from now, we're gonna be celebrating Kemyana and Anna and other amazing digital marketing small businesses uh, in our graduation celebration. Uh, it's on March 2nd, March your calendars. Uh, again, we are so thrilled to be partnering with the mayor on this initiative and our media sponsor is South Florida PBS. We also have uh, assembled kind of a who's who uh, of top community partners. Uh, here is uh, our list, uh, the Miami Dade Chamber of Commerce, ICABA, Miami Foundation, Miami Bayside Foundation, South Florida In Interactive Marketing Association, the AMA of South Florida, the Beacon Council, Creative Station, Community Fund of Miami-Dade, Access Helps, Cutler Bay Business Association, Coconut Grove Chamber of Commerce, Coral, uh, uh, Coral Gables Chamber of Commerce, and the Aventura Marketing Council. If, you earn low, if your logo is not here and you want it to be, contact us uh, at info at bizhack.com and we'll get you as a community promotional partner. The reason that we have 118 people on today's session is because of you, our promotional partners, and we're so grateful. Um, again, my name is Dan Gretsch. I am a business storyteller and I am hell bent on helping you leverage storytelling to more effectively market your business and make more money and have a bigger impact in the world. And that's what we are all about. Today's session comes included with a handout with key takeaways. You're going to get a link to our YouTube channel where you can go to actually watch a recording of this video. That's a free resource. Moving forward, we also recommend that you go ahead and you subscribe to our YouTube channel to continue to kind of keep in touch with the amazing content that we're putting together. You're automatically registered, all 121 of you, for our upcoming master classes. We have, again, one coming up in two weeks and then season four starting in March. And then at the end of today's session, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the course that Anna and Kemyana are going through and talk about a scholarship program that we have for minority and women-owned businesses, for underserved businesses who we are dedicated to working with and representing. Um, as I said, you'll get a sneak peek into that at the end. And Yoel is an example of an extraordinary uh, minority-owned business uh, who he, 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 he is, uh, who has just taken you know, the little nuggets of knowledge and built them into an extraordinary business. And Yoel uh, is not only a, a former uh, student uh, with the BizHack program, but he's also become uh, one of our masterclass instructors, and he's leading a specific mastermind group for other Mosquito Joe franchisees who want to learn from the playbook he's developed uh, in partnership with BizHack uh, and, and accelerate the growth of their business, too. And Yoel is, uh, among other things, uh, a fellow graduate of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program, an amazing resource to any of you small business owners uh, who are more than $150,000 in revenue and been in business for more than three years. It's uh, funded by Goldman Sachs. It's, uh, the curriculum is from Babson College, the number one small business educator uh, in the country, and it's completely free of charge. Uh, an amazing resource. I'm an alumnus of it as well as an instructor in it. Yoel uh, and I have helped, uh, have, have both gone through the program and we can tell you that of the many resources we have in town, this is among the best. And it comes with my absolute highest recommendation. With that, uh, Yoel, man, I don't even know what to say about you. I am so lucky to have you in my life and to have you a part of our uh, incredible BizHack team. And uh, I'm very excited for you to share with us um, the hard-won insights that you've learned of how to grow your business using Google Business Profile uh, and just the amazing 
uh, outcomes you've been able to have for your business. So take it away. Yeah, thank you, Dan. You know, I'm very excited as well. And I think the lucky one is me. Um, I'm meeting with you guys and, and going through your program and just, you know, now, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so thank you all for, for joining us. I mean, this is something that if you're, if you don't know what Google Business Profile is, if you just started your business or if, if you've been running your business for a while, you're at the right place, okay? Just taking the time out of your day to actually learn something, you're taking a step in the, in the right direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and share the, can you see it? Good, all right, good. So guys, get Google Business Profile, what is it? What was it? It was Google My Business. What was Google My Business? All of your businesses have a listing on Google and Google Business Profile is how you can manage that listing. So you can update your phone number, your address, your, 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 your hours of operations. Uh, so these are a few things that I've learned through my entrepreneurial career that using Google Business Profile that I've come to, to notice, these are the top things that will uh, improve your listing, right? So first thing is, is we're gonna talk about the new name and the new updates to Google Business Profile. We'll talk about the importance of, complete, of a complete business listing. Then we'll talk about is content still king? The importance of reviews, staying relevant with posts, what's working and what's not on your profile and how you can communicate through messaging. So why Google Business Profile? Businesses that use it are two times more reputable uh, online, right? It's a great local SEO strategy. If you're not doing any SEO, which is search engine optimization, which most of the time is something you pay for or you do yourself that allows the internet to find you better uh, in, in, in basic terms. It allows you to have a rock solid address. So making sure that people know where they can find you. If, if you have a, a retail store or restaurant, making sure that the address is correct online so that when, th when they try and get directions to your, to your business, they can get to the right place. Google has 86% of all search traffic. So it would behoove you to have the largest search engine know how to find you and people that use it know how to find you. 97% of users search online to find a local business. That's, that's, that's a lot, you know, that's almost everybody. And 62% of consumers will disregard a business if they can't find them online. So if you don't have a listing online, you're not gonna get the business. This is what Google shows you when you search for a, a local company. There's three different places where they can show you this information. The first is called the Google Knowledge Graph, which pops up on the right-hand side uh, when you do a search for, the, for a specific company. The local pack is more of a, of a near me or, uh, thing. So if, if you ask, um, I need to find uh, an MRI center near me, the Google local pack will give you a few options. And then you have Google Maps. You know, I'm, I'm sure we've all used Google Maps when you search for a, for a business, that's how it shows up. So the first step is understanding what has changed with Google My Business. So why the name change? It's, it's, it's not as deep as you think. It's not really, uh, it's, it's not that cool of a story. In a nutshell, Google just wanted to keep it simple. Um, I think Google My Business, when you say it to somebody, it feels like you're asking them to Google your business, to search for your business online. Um, so I think that's kind of why they did that. So they changed it to Google Business Profile. I, personally, I feel that's kind of confusing too because it's, a, it's the, the way you manage your profile, but it's still called Google Business Profile. So Google Business Profile is the tool that enables you to manage and optimize your business listing on Google. That's the nuts and bolts of it, right? This is the Google Business Profile Manager. It's a dashboard where you can go in and, and, and change all of your info. You can upload posts. Unfortunately, this is going away. Now, unless you, you, you manage multiple listings or you're an agency that, that handles a, a, a bunch of locations, this manager will stay with you. This is how you're going to manage them. But for the regular people that only um, manage their, their one listing, it's going to change to uh, 
the search page. So now if you're the owner of, of your business profile and you, and you go on Google and you're logged in under your profile and you search for your business, you're going to see all this information now. You're going to see the, you have the ability to edit your profile. You're going to have the ability to, to promote, to post, to keep the customers up to date, to get more reviews just through the search engine. You don't have to open up a different program. You don't have to do anything. It's all from the search page. Um, this is a picture of my business, of my search. Um, you'll see here on the right-hand side, that's what the knowledge graph is. And this is where all the information that you're updating um, is gonna be shown most of the time. Now, take a quick look and remember this picture and remember how much information is on there. Because when you don't have a business profile that you've updated or, or, or is optimized, it looks a little bit like this. You know, It's just very short to the point, not much information, uh, not much so social proof. Um, now, if, you, if, if this is your company and you haven't logged into a Google Business Profile yet and you don't know how to do it, just search your, your business. And if you want to take management of, of it, you, that you want to administer it, when you see this button, own this business, that it, that's Google asking you if this is your business. And if it is, you want to click that and you want to go through the steps to take ownership of that listing, okay? When you click this button, you'll get this screen. You click manage now, and then it's gonna have to verify you. And the way it does that is they usually send a postcard through the mail that has a code on it. So they're gonna send that to your place of business, the address that's on your listing. And once you get that card, you have to go back in and enter the, that code. Once you enter that code, then you become the manager of that business and you'll be able to manage all the listings. So when you're in that screen, this screen right here, and you're, and you're trying to manage your, your listing, you'll get these three little buttons here, edit profile, promote, and customers. And what you'll see under those is this information. So when you click the edit profile, you'll see that you can update your business information your hours of operations. You can showcase products. So if you sell something or, or you have a service, you, you can upload that, that information into here. And that's very important too, because when somebody's looking for a service that you provide or a product that they're trying to buy and, and, and you have that in here, Google parses this data, which means they basically read this data and they can find uh, that search based on which services or products you have on your business listing. It's a very important tool and I think it's very, it works very well too, um, especially because it's Google, the one that's finding the information and you're the one that's making sure that your services and products are there. You can also add photos, which are very important. We'll talk about that later. Und under the promote button, you'll have uh, a performance so you can see how your listing is performing on Google. You have the option to advertise using Google ads uh, straight from here. You can add photos of your businesses, um, your services, your products as well. You can ask for reviews. You can add updates to update your customers, which is kind of like a little, a social post kind of, if, if, if you're doing a Facebook post, that's kind of what it looks like. And we'll see a little later. You can add offers. Um, so you can do, you can promote your, your offers um, that you're giving a buy one, get one free, anything like that. And you can also add events. So if your business is, is, is joining or creating an event, you can, you can add that to Google and it'll let you, It'll let people find that information. Under the customers, you'll see the reviews that you're getting. You'll be able to reply to reviews as well. You'll see any messages that people are trying to send you through Google, and I'll show you what that is later on. And then you also have the Q&A. The Q&A is anybody that finds your listing and asks you a questions directly on Google. And that's very important too, and we'll talk about that later on. So, it's actually a little one. Sorry about that. So what can you do when, you, when you're updating your, your, your business listing? What kind of information should you be giving out? So you should be letting people know if you have any hours of op operations that aren't normal. Um, if you close early, if there's a long weekend, make sure that you're updating that because when somebody goes to search your business, 
uh, on a particular day that, that you might be closed, but you didn't update your hours, it'll say your business is open. And if they take the trip to, to get over there and you're closed, that's what's called a bad customer experience. And they probably won't go back or they might think you're closed. You can add more hours, which we just talked about. You can select attributes that show you offer online services like classes and appointments or estimates. Um, you, you can have extra services that you're providing for the community. And if your business is temporarily closed, you definitely want to update your listing with that so that people aren't trying to go there when you're closed. And all these updates will show on your, on your, on your business profile and also in search and maps. So moving on to step two is, is the, I think one of the most important parts is the actual listing itself, right? So the primary category when you're creating your listing um, is very important. You wanna choose a business category that's very close, if not the one you have. Uh, Google currently has a little over 4,000 categories of businesses and they're always adding more, but it is possible that yours is not there. If it's not there, try and pick something that's as close as possible. We can overcome that later on in the process. And I'll show you how. So you're gonna pick your, your, your business category, make, make sure. Another thing you can do is, is do some searches for competitors on Google. And on, on, on their profile, you'll see the business cat category that they chose. And if that makes sense to you, you could use that as well, All right? So when, when you're filling out the business info, you wanna make sure that try and fill out as much as possible. Take up all the characters if you can. The fact is that a well-populated GBP listing, it ranks better than those that are not populated. So some of the stuff that's asked in that business info that you should be putting is the business name, obviously, the type of business, your address, hours of operations, phone number, website, your geographical locations if you serve. Uh, remember, you can add uh, zip codes or cities in there That'll, if you don't go outside those borders, it's very good for you. If you do go outside the borders, just make that area bigger uh, to where you do serve. Make sure you add a business description because in that area, you can add value by using specific keywords about your business. And this is how we overcome that initial uh, category, primary category um, issue. In this description, say what you do, what you sell, what, what you service, uh, because Google will parse that information as well. So when people are looking for a service on Google that you provide and it's in your description, but it's not your primary category, they can still find you. Okay, so that's very important. Like I said, if your category is not listed, it's better to explain what it is that you sell and provide. So a good pro tip is to keep your nap consistent across all your listings, not just Google Business Profile. And NAP stands for your name, address, and phone number. Now, a plus is to do the same with your hours of operation. So make sure that Yelp, Google, Foursquare, um, any of those business listing sites all have the same information because Google does not like it when it finds different and different information about your business online. They tend to derank you when that happens because your information is not the same. So they don't know what's right. So they rather promote somebody that's information is correct. Yeah, so this correct. idea of NAP is essential to all search engine optimization, including Google business profile. Now remember the same company, Google, manages SEO for most of the web as well as for so so what they're trying to get you to do is follow the same best practices on Google business profile as they would want you to follow uh, on all of your listings and all of your websites. Laura Ramirez asked, what if you serve online in a number of states, for example, California, Florida and New York? I think you can so she's probably states. Yeah. yeah. So um you know, this isn't exact. So one thing I want to just remind everybody is Google business profile was really created initially and primarily for retail locations and local. And retail. so local retail. So if you are um, in uh, a co-working space, for instance, like one of you is uh, like BizHack used to be, uh, it could actually be uh, impossible uh, because you don't have a unique address unless you have like a suite number uh, to actually be listed. Uh, 
Yoel has a company, Mosquito Joe, that has, I think, 350 franchise locations. And each of those franchises have their own local listing. So, they, so Mosquito Joe, as a corporation, has 350 local GMB listings, each one of those having to be managed locally, right? right. So it's a big work. It's a big lift. Um, so Laura, in your case, you know, one is you might not be able to list it at all because you're a virtual company. Two, if you did want to sort of have a location in California, Florida, New York, you could potentially have three Google My Business listings there. And then, Yoel, you said that you could potentially list uh, in your single listing different locations. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think you might be able to do states, individual states, but I have to get back to you on that one. Carlo uh, Palazzi asks, do you recommend having GPB uh, Google business profile if you're 100% e-commerce with no physical storefront? Yeah, so one of the things that you can do with, uh, with, with Google business profile is that when you're creating it, you can say, I don't have a physical location. And the, you'll, still, you'll still need to, to provide one for Google, but they won't list it because they need a business address. But if you say, I, I don't have uh, a, a local, which is, which is us, right? So I don't have anybody that comes to my office. We go and service people's houses, so we're not. We don't have a location. We have an office, but we don't have um, a location where people can come to. So they do give you the option of hiding that address, even though uh, it still needs it. But if you're an ecom, you you can use it. Yeah. Yeah, um, and then Dominique Jean Baptiste was saying, uh, does Mosquito Joe? Because it has these three hundred listings, is it all under one Google profile or three hundred Google profiles? They're all separate because we're all separate business owners, so each business exactly. has its own. Yeah. And the idea, guys, as we're going to get to here, is when you're creating content, which you need to do to really maximize Google My uh, Google Business Profile, each of those locations should have original and unique content, right? Because the whole point is yeah. there are separate locations. Yeah, you, you can obviously have some some overlap on content, but you, to, to really make it work, you want some local content. Um, uh, Michelle Rupp said that it does look like there's a place for service area. Uh, yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Michelle. Um, and then assume that if you already have the GMB page, Google My Business page, it'll port over to the new format. Excellent right. question. It's yeah, really so, a, re, it's a renaming. Yeah, it's, it's a renaming, and, and they'll be taking away that, 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 that manager page, that dashboard. Uh, I just don't know when. So it, it, yeah. it's going to happen in 2022. They're also removing the name Google My Business sometime in 22. Perfect. All right, to you, I'll, uh, we'll get some more questions. Keep them coming, guys. This is great. So thank you, Ben. So edits. Um, pay attention to any edits to your listing that have been made because anyone, including your competitors, can make suggestions to edit your Google Business listing. If you didn't hear me, hear me again. Anyone, including competitors, can make suggestions to edit your page. This can cause um, potential customers to be led in the wrong direction. So what happens is if somebody suggests an edit to your page, say you might have the wrong phone number or, or your hours are incorrect, uh, you want to be constantly looking at this, making sure that, that those edits are correct or not, right? Because I'm pretty sure if you don't, they, it might go into it automatically after a certain period of time. So keep that in mind. And if you go like back, what, what, you see that where it says own this business question mark? Yeah. So Google is scraping the internet for directories and they will actually list your company whether you give them permission to or not. And really, and the key is you need to claim the real estate by saying own this business. And what they'll do is they'll send you a physical postcard to validate it. So for all of you who are asking, like Cindy and others who are asking questions, really detailed questions about do I qualify, yada, yada, we're not going to be able to address any more of those questions. The bottom line is this, Google your company's name, see if it comes up, it says own this business, click on it. And if it doesn't, then you need to go and register with Google. It doesn't matter if you've registered with the state, this is a different registration process entirely. So any other questions, guys, related to that are all Googleable. Uh, you know, Google has a huge sort of help desk for this kind of stuff. So we're not gonna be able to address any more of those in this meeting. And at, at, at the end of the presentation, I have some links uh, for all that to, to help people. So this is BizHacks um, Academy's listing. And you'll see here how it shows his um, service area is all of the US. That's because he put, he services all of the US 
this act is an online um, service, he can we can give our services all across the US. So that's why you see that there. If not, you would see just the area that you service. Another very important area to watch is the Q&A section. So on the right-hand side, towards the bottom, you'll see you can ask a question to, to this company. Now, you want to make sure that you're the one to answer any questions first. And why is this? Because anybody can answer questions that have been asked. Okay. Again, it's very important because somebody can put incorrect information about your company to somebody that's requesting information and it's the wrong information. So just make sure that you're looking at the Q&A sections as well. Um, encourage your customers to ask questions on there. That's a really good area that people don't usually have a lot of information on. On the left-hand side of the screen, I have a Q&A section from a local bar, um, a liquor lounge at the bend. And you can see that the, answer, the questions that are asked, the people answering it aren't, don't work there. So this is somebody that went, they knew that there, there wasn't any more carry on Sundays or only on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and they answered. Is that correct? I don't know. But if I saw the owner answering that question, I would probably feel safer that it was a, a real answer. So just keep an eye on that. We're gonna move on to images and videos. This is one of the most important things uh, for your Google business profile. It helps show the, the legitimacy of your business. It'll help show your story, the culture of your business, your, the personality of your business, right? This helps create social trust. It shouldn't surprise you that Google rewards businesses that include more images by a lot. And I'll show you a little graph uh, later on. So having several relevant images in your listing is gonna help your business stand out from the crowd. Uh, it's gonna help you achieve higher rankings and attract attention to possible customers from possible customers. In addition to you being able to upload photos, Customers can also upload photos. And I can tell you for a fact that customer uploaded photos work a hundred times better than any photo you're gonna put up. So if, if there's a way for you to get customers to upload photos to your G GPB, go ahead and do that. It's gonna be one of the best things you, you've ever seen. 60% of consumers say local search results, results with good images capture their attention and push them towards a decision. So for pictures, upload a variety of images to Google, including exterior shots of your business if you have it, interior photos if you can, Sh snaps of staff is very popular, and obviously pictures of your products or services. Avoid overly professional photography. I'll say it again, avoid overly professional photography. It can make your business seem untrustworthy. So don't try not to use stock photography. People want to want a real feel for your business. Google doesn't like stock images. It knows when you upload stock images. It reads the metadata, which is information stored inside the picture. And it doesn't like it. It likes pictures that are natural you know, from your phone. All of us have one of these. Take pictures. It doesn't have to be perfect. Use it, upload it, and you're going to see a difference. Also use videos. Use videos to show customers why you're different. Why is your business different? You can use the videos to show off your work or educate your audience. Explain your products and services. Show the human side of your business. And the only way to do that is with videos. Also, SEO, especially Google, loves videos. So the more videos you can, you can upload, that are relevant to your business, the better is gonna be for you. We know that Google appreciates businesses that utilize the, the software. It generally believes, it's, it's believed that listings that have images, posts, and messages rank better than bare bones listings, okay? That's a fact. So now what happens when you get reviews? You know, how many of you, I guess the better question is who has it? looked up reviews for a business uh, when they're looking to buy something, right? I, I bet you that number's a lot smaller uh, than the other way around. So what other people say about your business carries more value than what you have to say about it. Responding to reviews shows that you value your customers and you value the, and you value the feedback that they leave about your business. 
Google itself confirms that responding to reviews improves your local SEO. So it doesn't matter anymore that you have 100 more reviews than your competitor. If you haven't responded to one of them, your competitor is going to outrank you. So make sure that you're responding. 91% of consumers regularly or occasionally read online reviews. That's a lot of people. 84 of people trust online reviews as much as a personal recommendation. So an online review is just a, has just as much weight and value that a friend or family member telling you that they had a good experience with the company. 74% of consumers say that positive reviews make them trust a local business more. And we're all about trust, okay? There's a lot of businesses that do, that don't have a lot of trust and the ones that do outlast those that don't. Little trick, don't worry about having and keeping a five-star rating. There's research that suggests that imperfect scores and reviews with an average of 4.5 or four out of five stars appeal the most to today's consumers. People think that a five-star rating is too good to be true. So don't worry about having a perfect score. As counterintuitive as it seems, negative reviews have a positive impact because they help establish trust and authenticity. People know that there's nobody in this world that can be a five-star their entire lives. There's always gonna be a little hiccup, a little issue, but if you can resolve that and sh show that it was resolved, that's gonna make people trust you a lot more. The trick is to respond, both positive and negative reviews. For negative reviews, try and be empathetic, try to resolve the issue. If responding to the review doesn't feel like the right method, like there's gonna to be too much information given out, take the conversation offline. Give that customer a call, an email, a text, try and resolve it offline. If you resolve the issue, you can ask them to update their review, okay? A, a negative detractor to a positive review, is a, it's, it's great to your, for your profile. If, you, if they're not gonna update the review, you can post what the, what, the, what the steps were taken to resolve the issue. So you can show people that you actually took the time to help them to try and resolve this person's issue. So make sure you're doing that. So consumers expect an average of 112 reviews before they make a decision. So don't forget to ask for reviews. That, this is a big mistake that people don't do. They just don't ask for them. And if you don't ask for them and you're, and, and you're hoping that these customers that had a good experience are gonna leave your review, most of them don't. So unless you ask for it, you probably won't get it. And the best time to ask for it is when you know somebody had a great experience, okay? So on to step five, where we see post events, offers, and more. So like I said earlier, posts are like a social media post that's gonna pop up on Google search, okay? It's gonna pop up on the, on the local searches and on Google Maps. So now the importance of getting your message and content in front of the searchers is huge, right? But getting them that content in front of them at the right place and time is probably more important. Google Post is one of the ways Google gets that content out, content out there and in front of people that are searching for your business. These posts can also include call to actions, uh, which is kind of like what you see down here, learn more. And that learn more button can go to your website where they can continue to learn more about your service, product or service. So to create a post, um, you click on that, on the, on the create post button. Um, there's a few different options when, when you're in that. Uh, there's what's new, there's products, uh, there's offers. Um, the post can contain a picture or a video, some information about the, about the pick or video, and a call to action if, if, if that's deemed necessary. So I suggest using call to action whenever you can. Um, it's just another way to get customers going to your site and improving your SEO, right? So why would you not give them the, the, the option to go to your website and learn more? And if you're not posting, you're missing out. I mean, you have to post and post often. You know, it, it, ideally once a day, um, if not once a week, make sure you're consistent the same day and time if you're doing it weekly. Um, I know there's a lot of studies and, and, and of things, of times that you should be posting. And 
honestly, everybody sees those same studies and they all post at the same time. As long as you're consistent, so if you pick Thursday at 11 a.m., try and do it every Thursday, 11 a.m. People are gonna expect to, to, to get your, the content at that same time every day. So you can also offer uh, ad offers. So you can promote sales, discounts, or coupons. Um, you can use a coupon code to track it. Um, so like if, if I were to do uh, a coupon code on one of these posts, I would say, you know, a GBP 2022, but I know where and when it came from. And like we talked about earlier, you can add events. So you can promote events to your GBP to help gain attention. Are we going to questions then? Yeah, I have two of them. Thank you for asking. Um, so the first one is Liza Galindo, uh, and, and thanks for being patient. This is a great question, Liza. I just wanted to wait for the right moment. She said, I'm hesitant to post from my mobile device to Google my business because I want to upload the picture first into my computer to properly label and title the picture before posting. Does this really matter? Or is it better to just post something even if the name of the image is a random default name? Yeah, so if, if you're talking about the metadata in, in the image, it's fine. The, the actual label of, the, of the, the picture doesn't matter. So use your phone, and, upload it from your phone. And yeah, the answer, the answer is done is better than perfect. Exactly. Uh, second question, Debbie Roberts, will they still have the message us option like they have on the app? Yes, I believe so. I'm okay. going to talk about that later too. Deb Carr asks, is there any formatting issue uh, using a Facebook post on GPB? Does it need resizing or anything? So using GPP, you, it, it has the ability to crop any images. So if it doesn't fit, uh, there is an area where once you upload these, the, the picture to the post, um, you'll see a two little squares that kind of like the cropping thing and you can make a fit to there. Uh, so they have, if you just upload the picture, Google will resize it to its best, you know, yeah. however it's, it's, it's done. So it's, it's not a big issue. And then just before I hand it back to you, I have one very clear response to many of your questions, which is, and I'm reading from Google, according to Google, brands, organizations, artists, and other online only businesses are not eligible for business profiles. And I will tell you the PO boxes don't count. So you know, I'll, I'll post the article. You can take it up with Google if you don't like it. <laughs> yeah, so like I said, here are the different um, posts that you can do. You can add an update, add an offer, and add, add, add an event. And this is what they look like. So as you see here, this is what the call to action button is. It's add a button. So you have the ability to add the buttons that say book, order online, buy, learn more, sign up, and call now. And the call now will be a call now button. So if they're looking at this on their cell phone and they click that button, it'll open up the phone app and it'll call that number. Um, the offers, you can give a, a, a title to the offer, a start and end date, and you can add more details uh, optionally. And the event, same thing, you know, the event title, start, start end times, um, and any information about the event, which also has a call to action button. So now we're gonna look at some of the insights that, that GBP gives you. And this is some of the information that will help you um, as you're managing your listing. So there's very valuable info to be learned from the insights link. Um, so the insights link used to be a button that said insights in the manager. Now, if you're doing it through the search page, when you find your business, you're gonna see this little eye with uh, the views this month. If you click that button, it'll, it'll bring up the insights. Um, page. And the insights will show you performance across different things. Uh, the overview just tells you how many people have uh, interacted with your business profile. So they looked at it, they clicked on it, they called it, uh, they sent you a message, uh, they, they did an online booking, they asked for directions, they clicked to your website. Those are all interactions. Then you have the performance tab, which will provide you performance on how people are finding you, how people are finding your listing on Google. So this is very cool because if you do run any SEO or you run any paid ads, especially Google, um, they're basically telling you right now how people are finding you. So when people, people found us the most, when they searched for Mosquito on Google, our profile came up the most. Secondly was Mosquito Joe. Third, Mosquito Joe Miami. So these are all keywords that they're inputting into the search bar in Google and they're finding us. So this is very cool and very important. 
Um, you can see the total amount of people that have viewed your business profile and how they viewed it. So if it was on a mobile phone, it was, it was on a desktop, uh, maps on desktop or mobile as well, that will show you. You can also enable the calls um, button link. So you can actually see how many people are calling you from the business profile. And this will give you a little idea of, of how important it is, right? I mean, 404 calls to, to my business just from a free tool that's online. That's a lot of customers, right? So Google really wants you to use this program. And how do they reward you? They're gonna push more traffic to your site. Now, this is a little test, I've done it. I've done it a few times, but this is one that I, I captured. Um, and this is actually, every one of these peaks is when I uploaded a handful of pictures, five to 10 pictures at once, and then I stopped. Now, what you're gonna see here during the same time period, so this is when I uploaded the pictures, right before October 20th, right after October 20th, I got a bump in traffic to my website, right? Very clear to see. I stopped posting, I got nothing. I did it again, posted a bunch of pictures after November 3rd, I got a bunch of traffic days following. So this just shows you in real time how much traffic and how, how much they want you to actually use the platform, right? Upload pictures, upload videos, post, do whatever you can. Use the use the, the platform. And then we're going to end with, uh, with messaging. This is what uh, Debbie asked, right? So when somebody searches your, your profile or your business on Google, um, and especially on, on a phone and mobile, they'll see that, that message button, okay? They'll open up a messaging app through Google, which they can contact you directly. So when they do this, you should try and respond as soon as possible. Three to five minutes would be great because they're, they're, it's top of mind. If you wait any longer than that, they're, they're doing their thing throughout the day. They forgot, you know, and if, if you can't answer within that time, you really should be trying within 24 hours to give them a response. Now, why? First of all, because this, this promotes trust and, and it encourages engagement with your business. But more importantly, Google can and will deactivate your messaging if you don't respond within a certain amount of time. So if they see that you're not responding to, to, to these questions, they will turn off your messaging just to stay ahead of the game and not have not give those, those, those searchers, those, those potential customers a bad experience. Google's all about giving people great experiences. And you not answering is really part of um, creating a bad experience for them. So guys, I mean, I want to open it up for, for questions and answers, but first of all, you know, the, in conclusion, uh, we, we went through these seven steps, you know, kind of quick, but it was a, a, a high level overview. Uh, understanding the new ways to manage your business uh, is very important because once that, that dashboard goes away and you don't know what's next, uh, you're going to have issues. Completing your business information and creating an optimized um, listing making sure you add your descriptions and what you do in those descriptions. Uploading pictures and videos, daily is best, but if not, get yourself on, on, on a schedule, uh, you know, on a, day, uh, on a day and a time to upload pictures. Um, one little trick I use is that if you do have uh, employees or, 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 you know, or technicians or anything out in the field or, you know, have them take pictures for you. You know, that's, it, it, it's a great resource uh, for, for you to have and have content, because I know it can be daunting to, to try and come up with content and pictures, um, but if you have somebody else feeding you stuff, then it's, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. Respond to reviews, good or bad, both of them. You have to respond to reviews. Post your updates. Again, you should do the same thing with a schedule. Try and post regularly. If, if you're already doing this with Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, just reuse that content. Just post it on, on, on Google My Business, on, on Google Business Profile. So you're not having to come up with more content just for GBP. You can just reuse. Use the insights to see what's working and what's not, okay? And finally, enable the messaging feature so you can talk directly to your customers while they're searching for you. There's no better time than when they're searching for you. And like I said, I was gonna have some links um, for you. These are all Google links. So they're all from Google. 
but they're all free resources about learning digital marketing, about small business. Um, they have the marketing kits that, that, that you can create content with Google and it'll have your name, but it's, it's branded and, and, and has graphics from Google um, and just different learning uh, sites, which, I, which I've, I've used a lot. So I think everybody should, should take a look. Love it. This is your chance, guys, to talk about Google Business Profile for, you know, location-based or retail stores, how you can leverage it from a master, someone who's built his own business massively by leveraging this. Um, Michelle Rupp asked, where do you retrieve C messages that come in? Um, and, you know, if you wanted, uh, if you wanted to do kind of a quick live demo of your um, backend, uh, Yoel, this would be a good time for it. No, no worries if you don't. Sure. Okay. Uh, while he's calling that, what I would do is stop sharing your screen yeah. and then you can get, get it ready while you're doing that. Um, Michelle asked, you must always write something to go along with an uploaded picture. Do the pictures need captions, Yoel? So if you're uploading just pictures to the picture um, section, no, they don't need captions. If you're uploading them to a post, then, then they need descriptions. Perfect. Uh, TLC123 Inc. is thanking us. Uh, you're welcome, guys. Like we are here to help you grow uh, and to give you guys tools to do that. And Google Business Profile uh, is an amazing tool. Um, you know, think what you want about Google, Facebook. Uh, you know, these are very powerful tools for small businesses. They have uh, allowed you to advertise uh, more inexpensively than it used to be when you had to rely on newspapers. Now. I'm an old ink stained wretch. I used to work at a newspaper. It's been really bad for newspapers as a result, but I think it's been good for business owners who actually take the time to learn the tools. And BizHack is dedicated to helping you learn the tools uh, in a cost-effective way and in a fun way so that you can actually make more money and do more good. So I'm actually, there's some customer information there. So I'm, I don't wanna put her stuff okay. on her. But yeah, there, there is a section in the, in the dashboard and if after the dashboard goes away i'm pretty sure they send you emails uh saying you that you've received a new message um and then there'll be a link in there that you can click on it'll take you straight to the the messaging perfect uh florencia asked can we add our business's web page to our google profile 100 yes that's a, an essential piece so is your phone number your hours uh really take a minute florencia and like do some research into what google business profile includes but you know, it is kind of like a Yelp listing, uh, but just Google's. And, and uh, Yoel, do you want to address Yelp um, and why Google Business Profile has gotten so much bigger in part because uh, of Yelp and the bad actions that Yelp is taking? Yes, so from what I know is that Yelp uh, is, 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 has become and has been a pay to play uh, platform where if you don't pay them, uh, they, they've been known to hide reviews, hide good reviews from your listing uh, because they haven't gotten you to pay that monthly um, service charge to them. So Google being free and being one of the biggest search engines, or well, the biggest search engine, um, they probably, they probably this, this product because they know that small businesses need um, a way for their customers or potential customers to find them. Um, and they've built it where you know, it's it's easy to to use. It's not pay to play. You're not competing with with with, with other people, other in, in that same industry. Um, you know, if if it's all even playing field is what I'm trying to say. So if I pay on Yelp, I get higher ranking. Somebody else that didn't pay, they get lower ranking. That's just not fair, right? Yeah. That, that shouldn't be what a pu public listing uh, is. Right? It's, it's it should be a, a fair game. Yeah, the, the more that Yelp has moved into a pay to play platform, the larger the opening that Google had to create this competitive listing service um, and really, um, you know, make it a loss leader for them. Like Google doesn't need the revenue uh, from these listings. That's all that Yelp has. So what's happened is Yelp is still important. We're not minimizing its importance, but Google has become far more important. And this has especially been true during COVID when um, you know hours and COVID restrictions, uh, people needed a lot more flexibility. So Google has invested tremendous amount of time in Google Business Profile over the last two years uh, to, to kind of really enhance it. 
You guys remember Google Plus from years ago? In essence, what Google, my business profile does is it combines Yelp, Google Maps, and Google Plus in one space. And that's, it's a brilliant kind of amalgamation of services and it's made it a killer app in digital marketing. It's incredible. And uh, in my opinion, the two biggest 2021 trends in digital marketing were the emergence of LinkedIn for B2B and the essential mitt of Google business profile for retail and location-based businesses. It's a, it's a must have now for any location-based business or retail store. Definitely. Um, so that answers Dominique's question about Google Maps. Uh, Catherine is asking if the patient or client uploads a picture, if a customer uploads a picture of the business that you don't like, can you remove it? Nope. Not really. <laughs> so it, it's very hard to have Google remove anything um because they want to be a, a free and open you know, environment but if if it's if the picture shows something a logo that's not yours a uh, different company then that's more likely to be removed um anything else is pretty fair game uh, i i have i have a somebody that posted a picture to my profile about two cars i guess they were washing cars and they posted it and it has nothing to do with us and i can't remove it it's not a bad thing but it just doesn't make any sense but I wasn't able to remove it. Yeah. Um, competitors will also flame you. So you need to kind of monitor this. Like you, you do need to flag content that is intentionally yeah. attending, attempting to kind of mess your business up and your competitors will do that to you. So you can't just set it and forget it with this. Plus it's that regular uploading that's gonna drive your, your traffic to your website. You know, what UL didn't say is more traffic to his website means more leads and sales. If yeah. your website is doing its job. So if you double your traffic and it's qualified, you're doubling your web-based leads and sales. And it's an amazing ROI. Um, and Wendy, this is not open to online businesses. Uh, Alejandrina Aguiar says, in reference to pictures and posts, what types of content do you recommend when you're a service business rather than a product business? Oh, man, and um, and I think and I think service. You're a service company, but you're you're doing you know, pest control services. I think she's asking more like B2B services. Yeah, I mean, pictures of your, of your service, really, I mean, anything, don't, don't overthink it. Uh, you meeting with a customer, uh, the customers, if you're in their conference room, you know, if they're in your conference room, just anything that throughout your day that is, is kind of tells the story of what you do, I think it's, you have to do it. It's, don't overthink it. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a consultancy, kind of a training company. You know, when we were running classes, it was easier, but now, you know, we'll do pictures of, of our team. We'll do pictures of us with our clients. You know, if there's a, uh, you know, a screen grab from the state of the county address, you know, whatever. Honestly, <laughs> Google doesn't have a way in the algorithm to know if it's a good picture, right? So it's just volume matters here. It, it's a little different than other social media platforms because it connects you to SEO. It drives traffic to your website. If your competitor isn't posting and you are, you'll get more traffic driven to your website. You'll show up in more searches, period. Yeah, if you, All if right, you do with, the work, uh, they reward you. you. Well, how many hours a week do you spend, does your company spend uh, on Google business profile? Maybe an hour. It's not a lot. And if you had to put like a round number on how much more money you make because of those efforts, monthly, annually? Six figures for sure. So you're making more than $100,000 a year with 52 hours of effort. Right. Okay. That's why we're here, guys, and we're begging you to do this because you will make more money if you do it right. You'll have access to this recording as well as a handout as part of the follow-ups from this. Thank you so much, Yoel, uh, uh, for this amazing presentation. Um, and um, uh, I wanted to take a minute to uh, talk to you guys a little bit uh, about uh, our upcoming uh, Digital Marketers uh, program. Yoel, you are an alumnus of this program. Uh, this is a program on digital lead generation. Um, if you wanted to just quickly talk a little bit about your experience with that, and then I'll, I'll take it from there. Yeah, sure. Um, so basically, I I have an IT background, so I, I'm a little bit more advanced than, than the norm. But I think when I was running my company, I was using an agency, um, and I was paying monthly, you know, five five hundred thousand bucks a month. 
Um, and I would get the res these reports and it didn't look very good to me. I, I, I wasn't seeing, I was seeing their numbers, I was seeing impressions, I was seeing all this stuff. Um, but when I asked my office, you know, where are customers coming from? None of them were from anything they were doing. So I thought, you know what, let me give this a crack, try it myself. So I fired my agency. Um, I started running my own ads. Um, I did 10 times better in the first month and I spent about 10 times less than what I was spending. Um, so I thought, okay, so this is cool. It's working and I don't know what I'm doing. So what if I actually try and learn what it is I'm doing? So that's when I, I had met um, Dan through our Attend KSP program. And I, I told him, I'm, I'm in, let me take the course. So I took the course, learned the fundamentals, which was, I think, the, the most eye-opening thing, you know, knowing that I can target my customers and then create um, ads that are targeting that specific group of people. Um, and what ended up happening was, I, I think I spent $1,100 on an ad and I got over $30,000 in, in lifetime value uh, brought to me while I was taking the course. It was about three weeks in. So just, just knowing the fundamentals, knowing you know, what, what to say, how to say it, who to say it to um, was eye-opening. And from there, I, I never looked back. Well, thank, thank you for that, Yoel. And uh, so we're going to transition now from the master class into a quick info session. Thank you again, Danilo and the mayor's office for the support. Thank you guys for coming today. Uh, more than 150 people strong. We're very proud. Uh, to do that in the post Zoom fatigue era. Um, and I actually wanted to share with you now, um, this is the actual results that Yoel was talking about uh, from those initial uh, you know, campaigns that he ran. Um, he spent a little bit over $1,000 and generated in just a couple of weeks, $30,000 uh, in lifetime value and revenue. And you know, this is one example. Um, you know, we have many, many others. Uh, Neto Almanza uh, was uh, promoting his family's San Jorge school. Um, and he was able to um, triple enrollment using the techniques that we taught, uh, which actually yielded $1.4 million in more tuition revenue over eight years. So um, it can be, the, the numbers can be just mind boggling if you do this right. Another great example is Angela Otero of Otero Dental Centers, another favorite uh, of ours. Um, she specifically caters to Spanish language dental services and was doing uh, Facebook messaging marketing to older folks. And it was just dramatically successful. Um, a little bit less than $3,000 in ads yielded $150,000 in new treatments and 26 referrals. So. The idea is that this is possible for you, for your business. You just need to get a good system uh, and do a little work. And that's where we stand. We're, we're really uh, an option, an alternative to the traditional hire a consultant, hire an agency. We prefer to upskill you and your team to try to get these kind of results. And we do that by working really closely with the business owner. Why? Because the business owner knows better than anyone who their ideal customer is and what kind of offer they'll respond to. So that's really the kind of core of, of what we do and who we are and how we work uh, with small businesses. And I wanted to share um, kind of a little bit more about sort of the system that we use and then how we get uh, those great results. So, so the system uh, that we use is called the lead building system. And, and this is uh, the product uh, of seven years, 700 small businesses trained, this continual asking of the question, how do we make lead generation simpler without oversimplifying it? And we came up with this model that we call the lead building system. And it has a foundation and six pillars. Now, I want you to understand that understanding how to implement the lead building system is not easy. That's why we run our training. But the concepts, I think, behind it are relatively simple for anybody to understand. When you're a small business, the foundation of your marketing is your business story. Why do you do what you do? And what do you do to make the world a better place? What is your story of me? And what is your core purpose? And so we coach you 
to really get good at articulating your why and your what. That's your business story. Then there are six pillars for every campaign, every marketing effort, digital and non-digital. What is your objective with the campaign? Is it to get them to click on a link, to fill out a form, to visit your website, uh, to buy a service if you're an e-commerce company? What is the objective? That's how you'll measure success. That's where analytics lives, right? Analytics can get very complex, but if you're simple uh, and clear about what your objective is, then the, the, the KPIs, the, the, the metrics, the success metrics become actually quite simple to identify and measure. Campaign objective is the number one area where small businesses fall flat. Like the very start, they mess up. And the reason why usually is because marketers, marketing companies, marketing consultants are very focused on leads and most business owners are very focused on sales. And that like fundamental disconnect causes so many failed relationships. So we always start with getting clear on what the campaign is designed to do and then making sure we measure that, not something else. The, the core of marketing, as I kind of alluded to earlier, is who is your target audience and what is the irresistible offer you're gonna to give to them to get them to give you their contact information, to buy your product for the first time, to become a long time customer. So our target audience at BizHack is the small business and our irresistible offer, uh, our free irresistible offer is the masterclass series, right? So that is an example of uh, a very simple uh, targeted audience and for years is the offer. You need to figure that out for your company. I'm gonna encourage all of you guys to apply for our scholarship program. If you end up taking us up on that and then enrolling in our course, that becomes your foot in the door offer. Become one of the 700 businesses that have been part of our paid training programs. And then after that, we offer a whole set of corporate services. That becomes our kind of long time recurring revenue. So it's a, free irresistible offer, a foot in the door offer, and a upsell offer. And every company needs to have it. For BizHack, the free irresistible offers are free webinars, the foot in the door offer is our courses, and the upsell offer is our corporate services, right? So you need to figure that out for your own business and implement it. And if you get that really tightened up, you're gold. The thumb stopping video and the messaging. Once you've established who your target audience is and what the irresistible offer is gonna be, you then need to express that through compelling video because video is the vernacular of mobile and everything's going to mobile and messaging to explain and put into context the video and to get drive people to ultimately doing what you want them to do, which is known as the call to action. My very favorite words in all of marketing is call to action. All marketing is about, do, is about incentivizing and driving action from your target customer. So what do you want them to do? Is it, do you want them to, in our case, apply for the scholarship or click on this button or fill out this form or watch this video? And then once you've established the call to action and the customer journey from stranger to sale, you then have the next phase in the journey with its own campaign objective, its own call to action and so forth. So. Uh, a great example of a very typical customer journey is you reach them with the Facebook ad, they click to a landing page, right? So the call to action is clicking to the landing page. On the landing page, they fill out a form, great, with their email address. Then you have an email which, or an email sequence which invites them to schedule a, a demo call, then you hold the demo call and you close the sale, right? That is a very typical customer journey for a B2B company, uh, or a uh, sales oriented consumer company, and you'd need to map that out. That's actually not one campaign, but at least four separate campaigns, a Facebook ad campaign, a landing page, uh, an email nurture campaign, and then a sales campaign. Okay, so that's what the lead building system is. It's not that hard to understand intellectually. It's really hard to implement. And that's what we help you with coaching and training uh, and a course. Um, and uh, would love to have you guys, uh, you know, apply for that. Uh, Lilia, you can put the link for the application um, into the uh, chat. And then I just wanted to take a few more minutes and talk to you a little bit more about really kind of digging a little bit more into how we get these great results. Um, and then we'll wrap up. So one thing I want to explain to you is anybody who tells you we have a one size fits all solution for marketing is lying to you. 
We are big believers in what we call one size fits one, which means not only is every business different, every industry different, but every business owner is different. Their interests, their goals, their desires. Like Yoel is very different than most other Mosquito Joe franchisees because Yoel has chosen to do his own marketing. 99% of his colleagues want to understand enough to know who to hire and how to manage them, but they don't want to do it themselves. It's a personal choice for Yoel, and it's a personal choice, and there is no right or wrong. As the business owner, you do get to pick. And so we adapt our coaching and our training to what your goals are and your needs are. A lot of you prefer to keep stuff in-house. Many of you prefer to do it yourself first so you have a sense of control and confidence and then give it to someone to do. So if other people would prefer to just outsource it to an agency and get it off their plate. That's the one size fits one model is that we give you a framework, the lead building system, a, a system, but then we actually work you individually with you and coach you so that we can find a solution that fits you and fits your business. We also are huge believers in learn by doing. And this is actually not only something that we teach others to do, but we definitely learn this ourselves. You cannot learn how to market in the abstract. You must market by actually putting stuff in front of customers, having them react to it. We call this the test and learn mentality. And too many business owners get stuck by letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. So we are forcing you into, a dis, into discomfort, into an uncomfortable place where you're actually running real ads with real people uh, and getting real results, real real time feedback. And it's that test and learn process, that learn by doing, that will not only solidify the knowledge in your head, will actually make you a better marketer as well. We call this earn while you learn, where you're running real campaigns, targeting real pay people, and then getting one-on-one -on -one coaching from experts and peer support and feedback from other business owners. The, every writer needs an editor. If you go and you put a Facebook ad out there and you haven't actually tested it against the test audience, you're gonna not be as successful. So the peer feedback becomes essential. We have very active groups on WhatsApp and in Facebook where we're pushing out ads and people are giving real-time feedback. And before you even launch the ad and spend the money, you're already in, be able to improve the ad because of the community of other business owners you'll have access to while with working with us. The biggest thing that we've come to learn is that most business owners do not have a marketer's mindset. And we call that the biz hacker mentality. And the biz hacker mentality is really about fail fast, fail cheap, and learn while doing, don't let perfection delay you. And so we really cultivate a marketer's mindset. And ultimately what we're trying to do uh, is give you control and confidence over your marketing. So as a part of this course, you'll get a certificate of completion. The certificate is recognized uh, by employers uh, and other businesses uh, are, uh, all around the, the, the region and the, and the country. We do offer a money back guarantee. You know, we know you're always sort of taking a leap of faith when you run in a training program. So if you attend uh, all of the courses and, and do all of the work and you don't feel like you got the value that we promised you, uh, we will give you your money back. This is not a guarantee of performance. No one can guarantee performance. If someone guarantees you performance that's, that wants you to hire them, uh, be careful. Uh, because marketing is one size fits one and every situation is different. And so we're not guaranteeing that we're gonna get you that 30 to one ROI that Yoel got, but we are guaranteeing that you will get concrete, actionable, business transforming intelligence by working and doing work with us. Finally, um, we do have a, a scholarship program uh, that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, this is specifically for um, minority and uh, women owned and other underrepresented businesses you go to bizhack.com slash apply, and there's a short scholarship application form at the bottom of it. Um, we've given out more than a quarter million dollars in over the last two years to underrepresented businesses. Um, it is why we do this masterclass series. It is why we serve people like Yoel uh, and uh, the people that Danilo serves. 
Um, it's it's 100% aligned with our uh, mission, vision, and values. And I myself um, am an MBE. I'm a, my, uh, a Hispanic-owned business. My father is from Spain. Uh, yes, I am also a white man and privileged, and I recognize that. But I'm also someone who has a deep and acute sense um, through my wife, who is a social uh, um, justice uh, CEO, uh, through my mother, who is a public school teacher in inner city Philadelphia. Um, you know, I have always been raised uh, through my work for 20 years as a journalist covering failing schools and poor folks in foreign countries. I've always been attuned to the uh, underrepresented, the voiceless, the the underdog, and uh, we are here to serve you. And it is such an honor to do that. And so um, I hope you apply for the scholarship. I hope you enroll uh, in the program uh, that's starting in March. It will change your life. Uh, we are in the business transformation business, uh, and we are looking very forward uh, to, to working with you in a deeper way. Um, thanks again to the mayor's office, uh, to Yoel, uh, and to all of you guys for, for sticking around. And we look forward uh, to seeing you in two weeks at the next masterclass with Abdul Mohammed on brand love. Um, thank you guys very much.